Hello everyone, this is Andres Restart, and this time we're talking about how the next 8 years of the Legend of Zelda series on Nintendo Switch 2 is looking to be wild. I think, similar to how amazing this generation was for The Legend of Zelda, next generation perhaps could be an even bigger deal. So that's what I'm excited to get into today. But before going forward, let me ask that if you do enjoy my content, to please subscribe and hit that notification bell. And now, here is a brief message about today's sponsor. Snaxi is the ultimate Android gaming mobile app where you can earn incredible rewards from over 100,000 options while playing your favorite mobile games. And it also helps publishers acquire new users. Every gaming session with Snaxi is rewarding, with over 100,000 items like gift cards, game skins, and in-game coins. Integrate Snaxi into your routine for non-stop gaming, personalized recommendations, generous rewards, and frequent content updates. For more on the Snaxi app, check out the link in the description below. So forgive me if today's video ends up being even simpler than usual, but there are a lot of things I want to talk about today that are very interesting regarding the future of the Zelda series. Currently, I'm playing through The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. I am trying to finish it this weekend. I do not know how it ends yet, so please do not spoil it for me in the comments below. But as I'm playing this game, it has me thinking about my entire Zelda lineup. I went into my albums option on my Nintendo Switch and I made sure to organize my games and put all of my Zelda games into one album. And then I saw that I had Breath of the Wild. And of course, it's DLC, Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition. Link's Awakening Remake, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, Skyward Sword HD, Tears of the Kingdom, and The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. All of these games came out in back-to-back -back years, the only exception being 2022, where we didn't have anything. It's been such a healthy 8 years for The Legend of Zelda. And shoutouts to Cadence of Hyrule as well, I'm not forgetting about it, but I don't hold it to the same level as these other releases. And so with Switch 2 on the horizon, it has me wondering how will the next generation of Zelda be? Will it compare to the Switch's generation of Zelda? It seems like a tall task, but looking over this list of expectations I have, they might just be able to do it. And of course, these are my expectations or predictions. I could be off. I probably will be off. But I wouldn't be surprised if the next generation of Zelda, these next 8 years, might look something like what I'm discussing today. So with the assumption Switch 2 comes out in 2025, which seems extremely likely, what are we going to get in 2025? Because as I talked about earlier, we've had almost a major Zelda game every single year. I imagine that it'll be something similar throughout the Switch 2 era, but there will be some gaps here and there. So in 2025 though, I do think we're going to see something Zelda but perhaps nothing extremely major. On Switch 2, I think we are going to see a 4K 60fps enhancement for Breath of the Wild. I don't know if this is going to be treated kind of like something huge like, say for example, the way they treated Skyward Sword HD or Wind Waker or Twilight Princess HD. I think there's a good chance there may be a separate physical release for $70 for those who have never played Breath of the Wild or just really want to get this physical version of the game for Switch 2, but I also kind of think that this might just be something that will be available for a small fee as an upgrade for those who already have Breath of the Wild on their Switch 1s. The way I kind of look at this, I kind of see it something like how we get these recurring announcements for some sort of NSO game, like we see a lot of N64 and Game Boy NSO announcements every month or so, I think during the Switch 2 era, there's going to be a series of 4K enhancements, and these are going to become the new thing that Nintendo will announce every month or so, so every month or so we'll be thinking, oh, it's about time for the next 4K enhancement announcement, what's that going to be? Is it going to be Super Mario Odyssey? Is it going to be Super Smash Bros. Ultimate? Is it going to be Tears of the Kingdom? I think throughout the Switch 2 era, there's going to be a lot of that conversation, there's going to be continued 4K updates throughout, and so they're not going to be treated like full-blown giant remasters, but nice enhancements. Sometimes there may be physical releases, but oftentimes they'll just be available through the eShop for those who want to upgrade the games they currently have. And so I think there's a pretty good chance that Breath of the Wild 4K is coming out next year. 
We did hear about a Gamescom tech demo of Breath of the Wild running at 4K, 60fps with virtually no load times. Now that was supposedly just a technical demonstration showing off the hypothetical capabilities of the Switch 2. However, we have heard a rumor from Midori that there is a Yu King O project, and Yu King is the codename for Breath of the Wild. The O implies that there is an enhancement or remaster in the works. So that's why I'm thinking that this might happen in 2025. Nothing too major, but it is something. Now, I do have on my mind Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD. Are these games ever going to happen? They've been rumored to be ready for Switch for such a long time, and I'm going to say that there's a chance that we do see them also in 2025 come out for Switch 1. And I think this might be maybe the last big chance for them to happen anytime soon. Because in 2025, it's going to be that transition year where there will still be some Switch 1 releases, while there will be a lot of Switch 2 releases to really push the launch year and have a lot of games early on. And so Nintendo's going to have a little bit of a balancing act while they still sort of maintain the audience they have on Switch while building up the Switch 2 audience. So I anticipate that in 2025, there are going to be more game releases overall than usual. And something like a Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD would do really well on Switch 1. Many people would buy that. They would probably bring them a lot of software sales. And 2025 might be one of the last real opportunities for it to come to Nintendo Switch 1, because by 2026, I expect that there's going to be very few games that are published by Nintendo being launched for Switch 1. There may be some, but not many. And because Switch 2 will be backwards compatible, this is widely believed and reported from many different places, you will be able to play Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD on your Switch 2. But I am not expecting any major enhancements. I think they'll be 1080p, and maybe these versions on Switch will be 60fps, but that will be for both Switch 1 and Switch 2, which might be pretty nice. 60fps might just be the standard for Zelda on Switch 2 and without the kind of frame drops we see in Echoes of Wisdom or Tears of the Kingdom. Now going into 2026, it will actually be the 40th anniversary for The Legend of Zelda. And many of you may already know where I'm going with this. I've been talking about this, theorizing on this for a while. It's one of the theories that I feel the very best about, and that is another revisit for Ocarina of Time. And I say revisit because technically Ocarina of Time 3D is a remaster, but it is an ambitious remaster, however, this came out all the way back in 2011. We're talking about a release in 2026, so 15 years afterwards. For the 40th anniversary, I think this would be the ideal game, and I don't think it would just be a remake this time, I think we could even go so as far as calling it a little bit of a reimagining. And there's a variety of reasons why I think this is happening, as I alluded to earlier. I've made several videos talking about different things we've noticed that seem to make sense. There have been multiple interviews with the series producer, Eiji Onuma, where in one case he was literally asked about Ocarina of Time and he said no comment, then laughed. Which, looking throughout the history of an interviews with Ao Onuma, there is a strong pattern with him saying no comment or laughing when it has to do with something about a, another Zelda game in the future being teased or referenced. And there is another interview where he was making mention of Raru from Ocarina of Time, and then most recently we've seen Echoes of Wisdom, there's a variety of references to Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask more so than any other Zelda game. And then we've also got this recent LEGO set that's not just for Breath of the Wild and Tears, but also the Ocarina of Time version of the Deku Tree along with Link as well. So I do think there's a build-up here. I do think that this makes sense. It's going to be too soon for a big brand new 3D Zelda on Switch 2. So some sort of remake with some reimagined elements is probably the best way they can get something out like this early on for the console. So I do anticipate a reimagining of some kind for Ocarina of Time for the 40th anniversary in 2026. Now in 2027, I think we're going to see another Zelda game. But it's not going to be a 3D Zelda game, it's going to be a 2D top-down Zelda game. Now we just got Echoes of Wisdom in 2024, so maybe it's unreasonable to expect a whole brand new direct sequel in 2027. But what I think we've been missing out on for some time is a multiplayer Zelda game. We had the Four Swords games, we had Triforce Heroes. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that we see something like this in 2027. And maybe it's not necessarily a Four Swords games or a Triforce Heroes, maybe it's just two heroes this time. Maybe in some ways it does make references to Echoes of Wisdom, 
and you play as both Link and Zelda in a two-player Zelda experience where you have the option to play co-op. And if not, you just play tag between two different characters in single player. I think this could be a pretty good way to revisit multiplayer Zelda, and it might be great to have that as opposed to another Hyrule Warriors. Which, by the way, I do not predict another Hyrule Warriors, at least for the foreseeable future. I feel like Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition pretty much did a great job of covering most things about Zelda, and then Age of Calamity was interesting because it was based off Breath of the Wild, or before the events of Breath of the Wild with those characters. In order to have another Warriors game, I think it would need to be based off a new Zelda game with an entirely new cast and generation of Zelda characters. And could there possibly be some other type of Zelda spinoff? Maybe, but I'm having a hard time thinking of what that might be actually. So I'm going to stick with this multiplayer style of Zelda, which will still technically probably be mainline, like Four Swords, like Triforce Heroes, but some people might look at, at it with a little bit of spin-off energy. But come 2028, I think it will finally be time to see the release for the next proper new open-air mainline Zelda game. The big one, the biggest Zelda for the entire generation, I think this is when we see it, in the fourth year of Switch 2, which seems like a long time, but Tears of the Kingdom came out May 2023, and the gap between Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom was more than six whole years. Six years and two months, basically. Now, we had some DLC in between, and there was also the pandemic that certainly delayed things, but I also will say I'm a little nervous putting this Zelda game in 2028 because there is a significant history of big Zelda games being delayed. On the flip side though, I don't think it's that unreasonable to predict 2028 because Tears of the Kingdom came out May 2023. So let's say the next proper mainline 3D Zelda comes out holiday 2028, basically five and a half years later. Considering that once upon a time, the typical Nintendo generation was five years, I think this should be a reasonable expectation. And then looking at the situations with Breath and Tears and how they each took about six years, there were extenuating circumstances that led to those situations. In the case of Breath of the Wild, it was delayed to make sure there would be a cross-gen version for Switch. And then in the case of Tears of the Kingdom, as I mentioned earlier, we had the pandemic situation. So hopefully this time, there isn't anything like those situations, and this next new Zelda can make it out by Holiday 2028, which again, would still be five and a half years after Tears of the Kingdom. But this would be the ultimate Zelda game. Looking at what they did with Echoes of Wisdom, I do think it gives us a little bit of a sign in terms of the direction they were heading in with the future of Zelda. And that's that this freedom aspect that they first introduced in A Link Between Worlds, then greatly fleshed out with Breath of the Wild and then Tears, but also found a way to incorporate that while retaining some of the linear elements from prior Zelda games, I think we're going to see an even better marriage of those elements. And I actually remember talking about before Echoes of Wisdom, how Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, I thought, presented a very interesting framework for how to handle open world exploration. There were multiple storylines, and they happened in phases to an extent. And in Echoes of Wisdom, they kind of did this to an even better extent, I would say. And I think in the case of this next new Zelda game, I think they could find a way to do this. And I don't want to spoil anything regarding Echoes of Wisdom, but there's a certain point you're reaching Echoes of Wisdom, where the entire map opens up essentially, and it is open and you can do things in your own way, but you had to get to that point. There were waves, and so there was still linear storytelling, but also within the linear storytelling, there was openness in phases. And so I imagine the next Zelda game will function in this way, would have even more freedom than what we saw in Echoes of Wisdom. It will feel very free, like Breath and Tears, but with the phases, they'll still be able to incorporate a lot of traditional Zelda elements, including dungeons with boss keys. And this Zelda game is going to be incredible. It's going to be one of those games where we'll be able to pour in hundreds and hundreds of hours if we so choose. And so going into 2029, I am not expecting any major Zelda releases. This will essentially be a break year. And yes, that does mean I am predicting that there will be no paid DLC to follow this new Zelda game immediately. There may be some free updates, maybe like a master mode or something like that, but nothing paid. However, in 2030, I think Nintendo will have an expansion to this new Zelda game. 
Think something like how Monolithsoft handles their Xenoblade games, where they have the main game, but there's a whole other additional story to play with the DLC, an expansion story, kind of like another mini campaign experience. In the case of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 with Torn of the Golden Country, it was its own physical release. Or perhaps an even better example would be looking at Elden Ring and its expansion, Shadow of the Erd Tree. It did not come out immediately. From Software took their time building this expansion, which essentially is its own game. So as opposed to spending five or six years on a direct sequel, instead what I think they're going to do, they're going to keep with the same characters, keep with the same mechanics, but they will introduce a new campaign, perhaps with a new world, that's not as big as the game that came out in 2028, but will still function as a significant experience that may take us 40 to 50 hours, and will be essentially a really nice expensive DLC. You'll be able to spend maybe $40 to get this DLC, or they'll have a physical version for $50 if you just want to play that and are uninterested in just having the base game, or perhaps you just want to have the physical version for collector's reasons. I really like the format of Elden Ring and Shadow of the Earth Tree, and I really think this is probably the best way to go about handling Zelda as opposed to making a whole on direct sequel. But in 2031, the Zelda hype will continue. I'm going to predict that it's in this year we see the 4K update to Tears of the Kingdom. Again, as I said earlier, I don't think these are going to be treated as big, major, whole on remasters. But it's going to be one of those things we kind of get excited about every month or so when Nintendo announced some sort of 4K update from some sort of prior Switch game. And what I like about predicting this all the way in 2031, throughout the entire Switch 2 era, ever since the supposed 4K update for Breath of the Wild in 2025, right? All this is hypothetical, of course. We are going to be speculating on, oh, well, will they finally release Tears of the Kingdom 4K in 2026 or 2028? And especially in that year where I'm predicting nothing in 2029, many are going to think, oh, this is the year it's going to happen. But no, they'll wait just a little bit longer. Very similar to how we had nothing in 2022 because of the Tears of the Kingdom delay, where we thought, man, this is the time to release Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD, but they won't do it. However, a few years later, when we've given up on it, that's when it happens. But as I said, I don't think this will be treated as that big of a deal. It'll be out there for those who are looking for it. But I do think there'll be something else that'll be kind of a new experience. It'll be somewhat of a Zelda remake, but also with new content. So it'll actually be a three in one. It'll be a remake of Oracle Ages and Seasons, but also they'll take the opportunity to revisit the concept of the third game and have Oracle of Secrets as well. You will have three different campaigns to choose from. And that's something that I think a lot of Zelda fans would be extremely hyped for. And I don't think it's that much of a stretch to think that we'll have two 2D Zelda experiences in an 8 year span of time, because that's exactly what happened with Switch 1. I'm just mixing up the order a little bit here. And then in 2032, for the final year of Switch 2, at least in terms of these 8 years, assuming they run pretty much around the same amount of time, I predict that we'll get a remake slash somewhat of a reimagined Majora's Mask. If they do it for Ocarina of Time, the expectation will then lead us towards Majora's Mask. And I think this time they will do a much better job of adapting Majora's Mask, and this will be based off the original N64 version, not the 3DS version that many people have problems with. And so just looking over how I sort of think this Switch 2 generation can do for Zelda, a Breath of the Wild 4K update, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD, maybe for Switch 1 owners, but of course, backwards compatibility. Ocarina of Time reimagined for the 40th anniversary, which by the way, I didn't mention this, but I anticipate that the Zelda movie might come out sometime between 2027 or 2028. Maybe it's a bit optimistic, but live action movies don't take as long as fully animated movies. In 2027, I also think we'll have a 2D top-down multiplayer Zelda experience, something like Four Swords, but maybe also carrying a little bit of the spirit of Echoes of Wisdom, and it's a two-player experience with Princess Zelda and Link together. In 2028, though, it will be the time for the big boy, giant, open-world, open-air 3D Zelda game that will completely blow our minds and it'll be the best game of the generation. 
2029 will be a break year, but maybe some free updates for this incredible Zelda game. 2030 will be a Shadow of the Earth Tree like expansion where you may be able to buy a physical version separately to this big Zelda game. 2031, perhaps the Tears of the Kingdom 4K update and a Oracle of Ages Seasons plus Secrets remake plus expansion. And then 2032, Majora's Mask reimagined. Does that sound too good to be true? Could be. But looking at what we got in the eight years for Switch 1, is it that much of a stretch? I guess we'll see. But how do you think the next eight years for Switch 2 and Zelda will go? Let me know in the comments below. This is Andres Restart. Thank you so much for listening and watching. And I'll see you all really soon. Take care. Bye. Thank you.